Hey, you. Welcome to your Lesson 11 podcast. Aloha, guys. It's Mrs. Klein. And Mrs. Wolbrin. And we're going to be talking about political developments in the early republic. We want you to take a look at this vocab and your guiding question. The guiding question is, how did the Federalists, Federalists, I'm sorry, and Republican visions for the United States differ? All right, you guys. So in our last unit, we learned all about the Constitution, how it was ratified in the addition of the uh, Bill of Rights. In this area, we're going to learn about the first president and Congress of the United States and how they set up the nation's new government. Yeah. All right. Washington takes office. Okay. George Washington was inaugurated or sworn in as the nation's first president. John Adams became vice president. Washington faced a difficult task. He knew his actions as president, as president would set an example. Congress agreed that Washington should be called Mr. President, rather than by a title that would suggest he was a king. Congress also had to settle differences about how to run the new government. Yes. Setting up the courts. That's going to be our next section. And Washington's cabinet. Congress had many matters to decide that were not spelled out in the Constitution. One problem was how to divide authority between the state and federal courts. Congress passed the Federal Judiciary Act of 1789. This act gave the Supreme Court six members, a chief justice and five associate judges. The current number is nine. The act also provided for other lower federal courts. John Jay was appointed chief justice. The Constitution gave Congress the power to create departments to help the president. The president appointed the heads of these departments, which became his cabinet. Washington chose Henry Knox as Secretary of War, Thomas Jefferson as Secretary of State, and Alexander Hamilton as Secretary of the Treasury. To help him with matters of law, Washington picked Edmund Randolph as the Attorney General. These department leaders were called together to advise Washington. Since then, other presidents have followed this example. Okay, next we've got economic problems and Hamilton's financial plan. Alexander Hamilton, Secretary of the Treasury, had to straighten out the nation's finances. First, the U.S. government needed to pay its war debts to France, the Netherlands, Spain, and merchants and private citizens in the United States. State governments also had war debts. By 1789, the national debt was more than $52 million. Oh, That's a lot of money. Okay, all right. Most government leaders agreed that the nation must repay its debts to win the respect of both foreign nations and its own citizens. Foreign nations would do business with the United States if they saw that the country would pay its debts. Yes. Hamilton's financial plan showed his belief in a strong central government. He thought the national government should be stronger than the state government's. He also believed that government should encourage business and industry. Hamilton believed that the nation's economic well-being depended on them. Okay. In 1790, Hamilton proposed his financial plan to Congress. The plan included the following steps to improve the nation's finances. One, paying off all war debts, including state debts. Two, raising government revenues. And three, creating a national bank. Yes. Now, sectional differences arose over repayment of state debt. Many southern states had already repaid their debts and resented being asked to help pay northern states' debts. <laughs> Hamilton asked Thomas Jefferson to help him gain southern support. They reached a compromise. There's that word. There it compromise. is. Like another, another compromise. Yep. In exchange for southern support of the plan, northerners agreed to place the nation's capital in the south. Washington, D.C. was built on the Potomac River between Virginia and Maryland. In the northernmost part of the South, right? Yes. All right. Hamilton favored tariffs. These were taxes on imported foreign goods. Tariffs had two purposes. They raised money for the government and encouraged the growth of American industry. The government placed the highest taxes on foreign goods that Americans used in large quantities. This ensured a steady flow of income to the government and encouraged people to buy less expensive American-made goods. Hamilton called for the creation of a national bank. A national bank would give the government a safe place to keep money, make loans to government and businesses, and issue banknotes. All right. And now we come into this. There's a bit of a conflict about interpreting the Constitution. Okay. Thomas Jefferson and James Madison believed that the Constitution discouraged the concentration of power in the federal government. The writers of the Constitution had tried to make the document general enough so that it would be flexible. Therefore, disagreements sometimes arose over the document's meaning. 
and these, yeah. these arguments are still, still going on today. today. Exactly. <laughs> the debate over Hamilton's plan for a national bank exposed differences about how to interpret the Constitution. Madison and Jefferson argued that the Constitution did not give government the power to set up a bank. They believed in the strict construction of the constitu Constitution. They stated that the government has only those powers that the Constitution clearly says it has. Therefore, if the Constitution does not mention a national bank, the government cannot create one. But Hamilton disagreed. He favored a loose construction of the Constitution. He argued that the bank was necessary to carry out the government's duties. According to this view, when, where a power has been created by the Constitution, the necessary and proper cause, the elastic clause, permits it to be exercised flexibly. Hamilton won the debate, and the Bank of the United States was set up in seven. I have two very different opinions about things. Yes. So with that, we're going to say goodbye. So I'll see you soon. All right. So long, suckers.